we are going to start concept of GST. Before learning concept of GST, let us understand difference between direct tax and indirect tax and then we will understand whether GST falls under direct tax or indirect tax. Cause rate. <coughs> Suppose in India, I am earning income. This is me. I am earning income. Income Tax Act 1961 says, if you are earning income, you are liable to pay tax. So, I pay tax. I am having liability to pay tax and so I am paying tax to income tax department that is government. And if you understand I am earning income, I am paying income tax. So even burden on burden of tax is on me. Say Mr. I. So burden of tax is also on Mr. I. Let us first understand indirect tax and then we'll understand the difference. Why income tax is the termed as direct tax. Let us go to indirect tax. Say a company is Balaji Wafers. So this is a company Balaji Wafers. I am purchasing a wafer from Balaji Wafers and Balaji Wafers is selling me one wafer and it is a sales tax rule say that if you are selling wafer of 9 rupees you will have to pay sales tax of 1 rupee. So Balaji wafers gives me an invoice saying that wafer is of 9 rupees and sales tax is of 1 rupee. And so I pay 10 rupees to Balaji wafers and Balaji wafers give me this packet of wafer. Now try to understand who is liable to go to uh, sales tax department and pay tax. Liable to pay tax. See what a sales tax is to Balaji wafer. If you want to sell wafer of 9 rupees, you will have to pay 1 rupee. Of course, Balaji wafer is collecting it from us. So, but liability to pay tax is of Balaji wafers. And if you understand burden of tax, who is bearing burden of this tax is nothing but Mr. I. You will say, sir, Mr. I is never going to uh, sales tax department and paying tax. Mr. I is giving this one rupee to Balaji wafer and Balaji wafer is going to sales tax department and paying this one rupee. Burden of tax is on Mr. I. See, liability to pay tax on Balaji wafers, burden of tax is on Mr. I. Liability to pay tax over year was of Mr. I. Even burden of the uh, tax was on Mr. I. So burden and liability both on Mr. I is it is a direct tax. Burden on someone else and liability on someone else is a indirect tax. And why the name direct tax and indirect tax try to concentrate. Say your income tax was rupees 100. See how the tax flows. This is me again. I am having burden of tax. I directly pay it to income tax department. See, this is direct. What is happening over here? I am giving. So this is me. 
I am giving rupee one to sales tax department. No, to Balaji wafer. And Balaji wafer is having liability to pay tax to sales tax department. And it pays the same rupee one to sales tax department. So this rupee one is neither income nor expenditure for Balaji wafer. The burden of the tax is borne by the consumer. That is who is purchasing this Balaji wafer. But if you will so see the flow of the tax, I am giving to Balaji wafer. Balaji wafer is giving it to sales tax department. The tax is not flowing directly to sales tax department. I am not directly going to sales tax department and paying the tax. The flow is indirect. And so whenever the flow is indirect, they are known as indirect tax. Here the flow is direct. So this type of tax are known as Right now in India, we are not liable to pay sales tax instead of sales tax and service tax. It is replaced. Sales tax and service tax is replaced by GST. That is goods and service tax, which is one type of indirect tax. And we will be starting concept of goods and service tax, which is nothing but GST. Let us understand difference between GST and central sales tax. See what used to happen in central sales tax. I am taking same example of Balaji wafers. Balaji wafers are manufacturing wafers and selling it to wholesaler. Wholesaler purchases wafer from Balaji wafers, does some additional related expenditure and sells it to retailer. And retailer ultimately sells this Balaji wafers to consumer. This is the flow or uh, the product life cycle. Balaji wafers is manufacturing this is manufacturing cost. It is manufacturing say 10 wafers at the rate of rupees 5. So it is rupees 50. I am taking small figures uh, to explain you example properly. Manufacturing cost is rupees 50 and they are 10 wafers. And manufacturing cost is rupees 5. It includes each and every manufacturing cost. Balaji wafers want to earn one rupee profit each wafer. So they want to earn profit of rupee one per wafer. And there are 10 wafers, so 10 rupees, 60 rupees. In sales tax, if you are selling goods to someone, now Balaji wafer is selling goods to wholesaler. You were liable to pay sales tax and say sales tax, these are not actual figures. Sales tax was a say rupees 5. And it will be selling at 65 rupees to wholesaler. We are also preparing invoice which Balaji wafer will give to wholesaler. It will be sales invoice for Balaji wafer and purchase invoice for wholesaler. So it is a sales invoice for Balaji wafers It will not show what profit Balaji wafers is earning because then wholesaler will come to know the business of Balaji. So it will write down for wafers, it is 60 rupees plus sales tax 5 rupees and total 65 rupees is payable by wholesaler to Balaji wafers for this 10 wafers. 
let us go to wholesaler wholesalers cost how much it is paying to balaji wafers for this 10 wafers 65 then 65 will be cost of wholesaler it will be also incurring some additional direct and indirect expenditure their expenditures are 5 rupees so total cost for wholesaler is 70 rupees now wholesaler will also earn some profit it wants to earn a profit again of rupees 10 uh, let me take a different figure of rupees 50 so it will be selling at 85 now what used to happen in sales taxes if wholesaler is the selling goods to retailer even if these goods were not manufactured by wholesaler then also wholesaler is liable to pay sales tax because the sales tax was levied on sales and so it paid sales tax let me write down sales tax at 10 percent mm, okay let me keep it ad hoc figures so i'm not finding out a uh, specific percentage uh, of sales tax but say sales tax payable over here is five rupees ten rupees So, 95 rupees will be the invoice price from wholesaler to retailer. Wholesaler will also prepare sales invoice. That is invoice. For wholesaler it is sales invoice. For retailer it is purchase invoice. Wafers. It will directly write down this figure. 85 plus profit 10 total is 95 how much money will flow from a retailer to wholesaler is 95 wholesaler will be selling this goods to retailer cost for retailer will be 95 rupees for this 10 wafers it is also doing some expenditures yes 5 rupees total cost is 100 rupees Retailer also want profit of 10%. 110. And sales tax levied is say 20 rupees. So it is 130 rupees. 130 rupees. Retailer is selling all this 10 wafers to consumer. and retailer is also giving sales invoice to consumer for wafers 110 rupees plus a sales tax of 20 rupees that is 130 rupees or 130 rupees is mrp for this 10 wafers maximum retail price inclusive of all taxes and ultimately consumer will pay 13 rupees per wafer that is total 130 rupees for this 10 wafers now let us understand the sales tax portion here the sales tax was 10 here it was 20 try to understand 5 rupees is paid by Balaji wafer to sales tax department but ultimately Balaji has recovered this 5 rupees from wholesaler. How? It is charging to wholesaler. The Balaji is not selling at 60 rupees, it is selling at 65 rupees. So it is taking 5 rupees for sales tax and 60 rupees for wafers. So this 5 rupees is neither income nor expenditure for Balaji. You can understand it. 
बिकॉज बालाजी इज पेइंग इट टू सेल्स टैक्स डिपार्टमेंट बट इट इज रिकवरिंग फ्रॉम होलसेलर दिस टेन रुपीज is neither income nor expenditure for even wholesaler same thing it is charging to retailer this 10 rupees and it is paying it to sales tax department sir then this original 5 rupees which is under the 65 that also wholesaler is considering cost see what wholesaler is recovering 95 rupees from retailer that is 65 rupees for wafer 5 rupees for his expenditure 15 rupees for his profit and 10 rupees for sales tax so in this 65 rupees already 5 rupees is covered so neither this 5 rupees nor this 5 rupees is cost for wholesaler so wholesaler for this 10 rupees it is not his cost neither his income he is receiving from someone and he is paying it to sales tax department this 20 rupees again is neither cost nor revenue for retailer because it is recovering from consumer and uh, ultimately paying to sales tax department so the total sales tax of 5 plus 10 plus 20 that is 35 rupees the burden is on consumer consumer is paying this 35 rupees sir in gst the scenario will change the burden will not go in on consumer the burden always goes to consumer in indirect tax it is paid by someone else the burden is on someone else as we have understood the difference between direct and indirect tax this should be clear let us understand concept of gst what happens in gst under same scenario try to concentrate manufacturing cost of 10 wafers for balaji wafer is 50 rupees now this will not change if government introduce gst and gst is levyable profit 1 rupee per wafer so balaji wants profit of 10 rupees so total uh, selling price will be 60 rupees and let us uh, right now understand gst rate is say 10% we are just assuming so plus gst 6 rupees that is 66 rupees balaji wafer will be also giving sales invoice to wholesaler for wafers 60 rupees plus gst 6 rupees that is 66 rupees this is sales invoice for balaji wafer but it is purchase invoice for wholesaler and the total is 66 rupees believe me it will remain same in sales tax or in gst here the rate we have taken weird so it is not remaining same but this is sales invoice for balaji wafers it will go to gst department and pay rupees 6 so up till this stage it should be clear it looks similar to sales tax let us go to wholesaler wholesaler cost will be 66 rupees no 6 rupees will not be cost for wholesaler and why i tell you once we finish this cost is only 60 rupees for wholesaler so even if how much is wholesaler paying to balaji wafer is 66 rupees i am not saying they will be paying 60 rupees the cost will be 60 rupees they will not consider this 6 rupees as cost why i'll tell you so the cost is 60 rupees how much uh, profit wholesaler uh, or what was the additional cost 5 rupees 65 rupees they wanted profit of 15 rupees 80 rupees and gst will be levied of 8 rupees 
because wholesaler is selling goods to retailer sales is liable for gst and 8 rupees will be payable by wholesaler so wholesaler will prepare sales invoice for wafers 80 rupees plus gst 8 rupees 88 rupees till this point of time everything is seen in sales tax in uh, gst everything is seen there is no difference except this i have taken cost of 60 instead of 66 which i have actually paid understand now the difference comes how much is the liability to pay to wholesaler what is liability of wholesaler is 8 rupees because gst levied by him or the goods sold by him was of 80 rupees and so 8 rupees is nothing but gst so what is payable is 8 rupees but wholesaler has purchased this wafer from, from someone yes from balaji yes balaji has given him invoice yes sir there's a sales invoice for balaji agreed it will be purchase invoice for wholesaler for wholesaler this is purchase invoice and as per the rule wholesaler will be getting input or purchase tax credit here comes the concept of itc input is purchase tax credit on purchase how much a tax wholesaler has given to balaji wafers is 6 rupees that will be credited and what will be paid by wholesaler to gst department is only rupees two. this is nothing but concept of gst on output or on sales you are liable for gst on input or on purchase you will be just getting tax credit and the balance figure is what you are liable to pay sir so, so they will charge only 8 rupees yes they will charge 8 rupees and not 2 rupees but they are liable to pay only 2 rupees in gst department now try to understand how much money wholesaler is collecting from retailer 8 rupees how much he is paying in gst department 2 rupees so 6 rupees is profit yes and also the 6 rupees is cost because wholesaler has paid 6 rupees to even balaji wafers so for this wholesaler this 6 rupees is neither a cost nor income from where it has earned income this it has charged 8 rupees but paid only 2 rupees so 6 rupees and its cost was also 6 rupees because it has paid this 6 rupees to uh, balaji wafers net cost is 0 and so i told you instead of 66 over here what we have taken is only 60 we have not considered that 6 rupees because we were knowing we are going to get input the tax credit this is concept of input tax credit and concept of gst how much ultimately is paid is 2 rupees how much was paid by balaji wafer is 6 rupees let us go to retailer for retailer cost is 80 or 88 it has paid 88 agreed but the cost will be only 80 we know it now right because he will be getting input tax credit so cost is 80 its additional expenditures are 5 total will be 85 it want to earn profit of 10 rupees so 95 rupees and gst will be levied will be of 9.5 so it will be 104.5 rupees will be selling it will also give sales invoice to consumer wafers 95 gst 
9.5 it will totally collect 100 and 4.5 now concentrate for retailer what is output gst or how much he is liable to pay because he has sold the goods 9.5 but he has purchased this wafer from wholesaler at that time he would have got this purchase bill this is purchase bill and it will be getting retailer he will be getting retailer will be getting credit of this 8 rupees which is on input so it will be getting input tax credit retailer shop input tax credit of 8 rupees how much it will pay to GST department it is 1.5 rupees so how much total GST is paid all of us are getting the concept right on sales I am liable to pay on purchase I will be getting input tax credit and so my net liability will be only 1.5 sir why we have not taken 8 over here we have actually paid 88 and not 80 we have not taken that 8 over here because that 8 is ultimately allowed as deduction while I am paying my GST. So it is neither my cost nor my income. This is concept of GST. Let us understand how much total of GST is paid on same 10 wafers. Total GST will be 6 rupees was paid by Balaji wafer. 2 rupees net was paid by wholesaler and 1.5 rupees was paid by retailer. Concentrate 6 plus 2 plus 1.5. This is 9.5 rupees. Instead of 35, you are paying only 9.5 rupees. Understand there are advantages of GST. What is the advantage? If you concentrate on sales tax, sales tax total burden of sales tax is 35 rupees. Total burden of GST on consumer is 9.5 rupees. I still agree that burden will be on consumer, but it is only 9.5 rupees in GST and 35 rupees in sales tax. Why it is happening? Try to concentrate. The original cost of 50 rupees. Let me change the color. Original cost of 50 rupees is the tax three times when it comes to sales tax. This 50 rupees is included in the 65 also and is included in this 95 also. And once it is included in the 65, it is included in 85 and it is included in 110. So this 50 is included over year also and year also. And so there is double taxation. There is double taxation. Also, see what cost is considered by wholesaler 65, where 5 rupees already is a sales tax. And on this 65, ultimately this 85 came from 65. And tax was levied on 85, in which 65 is included, in which 5 rupees is included. So even tax on tax is levied. Two problems, double taxation on this original figure of 50 rupees, three times a tax is paid. And number two is a tax on tax is also paid. On this five rupees also, the tax will be calculated and it will be paid. Two problems in sales tax, double taxation. and tax on tax and thus both problems are so solved by GST. In GST there is no double taxation and there is no tax on tax. I'll prove it. Try to concentrate. 
you pay tax only on value added what value wholesaler have added 15 and 5 rupees what is value addition how much cost you have increased of this particular product 15 plus 5 that is 20 rupees 20 rupees and what is the gst rate 10 percent 20 rupees into 10 percent will be 2 rupees so tax is paid only on value added it is not paid on the 60 rupees and so it is not paid on this 50 rupees the second time balaji wafer was liable to pay on that 50 but wholesaler on that 50 rupees he is not paying tax so there will be no double taxation as far as gst is concerned also this 5 rupees the 6 rupees is not considered as cost by wholesaler so it is not included in this 80 rupees see this in the 6 rupees is not included in this 80 and this 8 is levied on this 80 rupees and so there is no tax on tax All right and in technical language it is said gst avoids cascading it avoids cascading effect of tax so there is no double taxation there is no tax on tax because of gst so gst is a type of value added tax what was value added by balaji how much cost balaji has increased of this wafer it manufactured it so it has increased 60 rupees it would be paying 6 rupees as gst how much cost wholesaler have increased see 60 rupees was uh, increased by balaji wafer so it has increased this 5 rupees and this 15 rupees that is 20 rupees multiplied by 10 percent is 2 rupees so wholesaler will be paying 2 rupees in gst department balaji is paying 6 rupees how much was value added by retailer retailer added the value of this much five rupees and ten rupees total how much fifteen rupees so it added value of fifteen rupees what is the gst rate at ten percent he would be liable to pay only 1.5 rupees and if you'll see over here he is paying only 1.5 so each and every party is ultimately paying tax on value added and not on total amount. So it avoids double taxation. Also it avoids cascading effect of tax. And you should also logically understand why it is also termed as value added tax. Because ultimately tax is levied on value added and not on total amount of sales. Next is dual GST. India as a country has adopted a concept of dual GST. That is if goods are sold or services are provided, then there will be two tax applicable. One is the tax of state and one is the tax of center. This is nothing but concept of dual GST. So sir, when GST was introduced, it was said one nation, one tax. Yes, of course it is one nation, one tax because the rate of center as well as the state will be absolutely same even the law will be in absolute sync with the center so let us understand which type of taxations are applicable when the goods are sold within the state or when the goods are sold from one state to another also we will understand the concept of union territory so first cgst is a central goods and service tax sgst is a state goods and service tax UGST is union, Terry goods, union Territory Goods and Service Tax and IGST is Integrated Goods and Service Tax. All will be having their separate laws. 
so s gst for each state will be different let us understand which tax are levied when the goods are sold from one state to the same state this is also known as intrastate sales or intrastate services say services is provided from one part of rajasthan to another part of rajasthan or goods are sold from one part of rajasthan to another part of rajasthan which two tax will be levied one as it is within the state state goods and service tax will be levied and center will also take its share so cgst will be levied so when the goods are sold intrastate again if they are sold from one part of gujarat to another part of gujarat sgst plus cgst one part of punjab to another part of punjab again sgst and cgst but when the goods are sold from one state to another say goods are sold from rajasthan to punjab then only one tax will be levied which is igst integrated goods and service tax so sir here the tax liability will be higher no say if this is 5% 5% total is 10% igst will be 10% right for the same goods or services that we are talking about again punjab to rajasthan again igst punjab to gujarat igst will be left let us go to union territory if the goods or services are sold or provided from one union territory to the same union territory that is intra union territory sale of goods or providing of services then let me not take out of it from one place to another then which tax will be levied is first utgst it is ugst plus cgst so central will take it says see it is very easy if union territory ugst cgst will always be there if uh, uh, within the state it will be sgst and cgst will always be there so if goods are sold within the union territory as i told you two uh, tax will be charged ugst and cgst let us understand about all union territories in india jammu and kashmir ladakh chandigarh delhi daman and diu dadar and nagaravalli lakshadweep pondicherry and the nikumar island now understand there are two union territory one is delhi and pondicherry which is having its own assembly own cabinet ministers and own chief ministers so if the goods are sold from delhi to delhi what tax is applicable is cgst and state government gst even in pondicherry it is cgst plus sgst i am talking about intrastate sales that is if the goods are sold from delhi to delhi or pondicherry to pondicherry in other all union territory say if the goods are sold from chandigarh to chandigarh we have understood it it is ugst plus sgst and this will be applicable to all other union territory except delhi and pondicherry this is a concept of union territory whether cgst will be applied or ugst will be applied if this is the question sir if the goods are sold from pondicherry to andaman and nicobar island then igst will be applicable 
and UTGST will not be applicable. It should be from the same union territory to the same union territory if you want to levy uh, UGST. Uh, otherwise, IGST will be levied if the goods are sold from one union territory to another union territory. This is a dual GST and we are learning all the dual GST. Let us understand if the goods are sold or services are supplied from USA to India or India to USA, there is no separate concept but IGST will be levied. So let us summarize all the points. Say this is India. This is one state. This is another state. This is union terri territory except Delhi and Pondicherry. And this is say USA. So if goods are sold from one state to the same state, CGST plus SGST. Same state to same state, CGST plus SGST. Same union territory to same union territory, UGST plus CGST. If the goods are store, uh, sold from one state to another, then IGST. One state to another union territory, IGST. Union territory to one state, IGST. And if the goods are sold from India to USA or USA to India, again, IGST will be left. So in majority of the cases, there are two tax which are applicable. And so we in India are having concept of dual GST. Let us also understand the taxes which are integrated by the concept of GST. See, previously our constitution of India is having two lists. One is a state list, another is union list. So the taxes which are covered under state list, the state is having power to make law and collect taxes on the same. The taxes which are in union list, center is having power, that is Indian government is having power to make law and collect tax for the same. So previously, before applicability of GST, there was excise duty, service tax, and say central sales tax. The powers were with center and entertainment tax, most important VAT, advertisement tax. This was with state. So this was in union list, this was in state list. Of course, if you want that excise duty should be levied by state, you will have to make amendment in constitution. And if you want that VAT is to be levied by center, then again you will have to make a constitutional amendment. Constitutional amendment was made and ultimately all these taxes were integrated in the concept of goods and service tax. So now there are no tax like VAT, entertainment tax, advertisement tax, excess duty, service tax and central sales tax. Everything is integrated. Excess duty is still levied on some of the product. But other all taxes are integrated under the head GST by making constitutional amendment. Say service tax. It is tax on services. Was first having, who was having powers? Center was having power before GST. Now when the GST is levied, we have already understood the state levies st uh, state GST, SGST. Then you will have to give power to state to make the law regarding the uh, service provided. And so the constitutional amendment was necessary. It was duly made. And now everything is integrated under one law, which is goods and service tax. Let us now understand what comes under the ambit of GST and which goods and services does not come under the ambit of GST. So within GST or outside GST. 
अल्कोहल फॉर ह्यूमन कंजम्पन इट इज अल्कोहलिक लीकर फॉर ह्यूमन कंजम्पन विच इज आउट ऑफ जीएसटी द पावर इज स्टिल विद स्टेट टू बैन टू मेक लॉ टू लेवी टैक्स एट वॉट रेट टू लेवी टैक्स द पावर इज स्टिल विद स्टेट दिस इज अल्कोहलिक लीकर फॉर ह्यूमन कंजम्पन सो अल्कोहल यूज इन मेडिसिन एंड देन मेडिसिन सोल्ड विल बी कवर्ड अंडर जीएसटी एंड नॉट विल कवर्ड अंडर स्टेट फाइव पेट्रोलियम प्रोडक्ट्स क्रूड ऑयल डीजल पेट्रोल नेचुरल गैस एंड ए टी एफ दिस आर फाइव पेट्रोलियम प्रोडक्ट्स वेर जी एस टी काउंसिल विल डिसाइड द डेट विच जी एस टी फ्रॉम वेन जी एस टी विल बी एप्लीकेबल दिस द डेट एज ऑन जुलाई ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू इज नॉट येट डिसाइडेड सो जी एस टी ऑन दिस पेट्रोलियम प्रोडक्ट इज नॉट येट लेविड स्टिल द स्टेट्स आर लाइबल टू लेवी द टैक्स ऑन दिस प्रोडक्ट बट इन फ्यूचर uh gst will be levied on this five petroleum product entertainment tax levied by local bodies now try to understand this is somewhat weird entertainment tax gst is levyable currently at 28% this video is made on in july 2022 and currently it is 28% taxes on tickets are levied or entertainment tax is levied now the power is still with local authority to impose additional tax on entertainment so here it is written entertainment tax levied by local bodies the power to tax remains with local bodies along with that gst so gst is levyable on entertainment and entertainment and uh, local bodies are also having power to levy the tax it will be scenario of double taxation on one services or goods two taxes are levied one by local body and one gst and still it is applicable tobacco it is within the purview of gst and power to levy excise duty also is retained so in tobacco also two duties are levied gst as well as excise duty tobacco gst plus excise duty entertainment tax local authority tax and uh, gst five petroleum products state is having power the council in future will decide the date from which gst will be levyable alcoholic liquor for human consumption is outside the ambit of gst currently also in future also it is intended that it will remain outside the ambit of gst the power will remain with state as far as alcoholic liquor for human consumption is concerned so this were some of the very basic concepts of gst and this concepts will prepare good ground for learning of gst law